Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to educate and inform our viewers about virtualization. Tonight's episode is going to be updating you on new procedures for Proxmox 7. We have done a similar episode and it was well received, but things have changed since then. Proxmox 7 is out and some new techniques have to be used to complete our task. So, tonight we're going to look at adding an SMB mount to our Proxmox 7 server so we can use it as storage for either backed up VMs, ISOs, or actually store and operate our containers and VMs from it. Although I do not suggest doing that as other techniques like iSCSI and NFS tend to be faster and less resource dependent, but you can do it if you so choose. So the first thing we're going to need to do is open our Proxmox web interface. You can see here that I have virtualized a clean install of Proxmox 7, which I have updated to its current version using the no subscriptions repository. Now, if we click on our server and open our shell, we can begin working with the shell console for our server. The first thing we want to do is install a program that I call CIFS Utilities. Here is the command to do so. Let's add dash Y so it automatically installs at the end of it. All right, it's already installed and it's fully up to date. Now let's create a directory where we're going to mount our new share. We can do this with the mkdir command followed by the path that we would like to use. Tonight we're going to use the path slash meteor slash share. Now let's create a hidden file that's called SMB. This file will be where we're going to store our username and password for our share. So we can later mount this using FS tab. This is the format that we're going to need to use in this file in order to mount our SMB share later on. Tonight I have set up a user account just for this video. It's called test and the password is going to be VE. Now you want to note this is in plain text and will be visible to anybody if they so enter your system and find your hidden folder. It's good to remember that. Now we can just press Control X, Y, and Enter. This will save the file. Now we can nano into our FS tab and begin adding a line to it. And now we can start with the final step, which is add a line to FS tab so that we can configure it to automatically mount our share from our SMB. The line we're going to use is as follows. IP address, name of server, mine I believe to be share, slash media, slash share, CIFS, Credentials location, ours tonight are going to be in root, file name, user, read write, and then we can now press control X, Y to save and enter, and we can run the mount a command to mount our new SMB share to our server. Now, as you see here, I got an error. I figured out what I did wrong. So when we were in FS tap, I called my server share. The server name that I configured for this video is not share, but test. One of my favorite names, I know. I should have remembered. So now we should be able to run mount A and you see that we get no error message. If we were to go over to our media slash share file path, 
using CD, we would actually load directly into our stored drive. Of course, there's just some files in here that I dumped for previous projects, but it is something to demonstrate for. Let's actually go ahead and mount this drive to our Proxmox server so we could begin working with it. To do that, we head back to our web interface and we go to data center, then we go to storage, and we click add directory, and we're going to paste in the slash media slash share into the directory location, not the ID location, and give it a name. We're going to call it storage tonight. And now we can tell it what we want to store on it. We're just going to use it for backup files. But you can select any one of these options or multiples, as you can see, for what you would like to do with the drive. Now when we press add, we will see the drive appear here under our PVE data center. And you can see that we've made connections. Now, I already have some previous backups that I have actually placed on this drive as I was moving them from one system to another. I will be deleting this container shortly, but I thought it was necessary to show you how to do this as some of the steps have changed since our previous video created on Proxmox 6.4. So here you can see the files that I have actually had on this server. It shows you that it's working and everything is great. So if you enjoyed tonight's video, found it helpful, and also found it informational, or you would just like to support Virtualize Everything in bringing you content about Proxmox and other virtualization softwares and systems, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video. Also consider commenting. All of these things greatly helps out Virtualize Everything in their mission to educate and inform their viewers about virtualization and to make it easier for everyone to have a home lab and learn about different forms of Linux, virtualization in general, pen testing, and other security related topics. As always, have a good night.